tournaments, like, dude, these kids have routers and shit that make it so they can only connect to certain locations. You get a bunch of bots in your fucking kill kill race tournaments. It's just, it, it's just, yeah. I, that's where I'm out, man. I'm, I'm not, I'm not doing that shit. So this is the Net Duma router, rumored to be the piece of technology that gets you into bot lobbies, whether it be in Warzone or any other battle royale game. Personally, I've had one in hand for about a month now, and since nobody has actually done the testing to confirm or deny this rumor, I figured I'd be the first and let you guys know. I think the results have been pretty interesting, and you guys are going to enjoy them. So before we get started with testing, I just need to do a quick review with you so that we're both on the same page as to how the NetDuma works. So this NetDuma is pretty much like a smart router, it's got a bunch of neat different features, it's got a VPN, it's got an ad blocker, it's got a device manager, you can allocate how much bandwidth goes to each device. But the two most important features that we're going to focus on today are the geo filter and the ping heat map. So with the ping heat map, this is essentially a feature that shows you all the available servers for a game at a given time. We clicked Warzone here, and as you can see, there are about a dozen servers in the United States. There's some in the UK, one in South Africa. There was one in Brazil during the day, but it is 1.43 in the morning, so I guess they turned it off. I have no clue. There's one in India, and there's a couple in Australia. So that basically shows you which ones are the closest, so that you know how far to set your geo filter. So what the geo filter does, simply put, is that anything outside of the circle, it just blocks the connection to. So like any server, any player completely blocks it. I can shrink this circle, I can make it bigger. But what the rumor is, is that streamers or YouTubers, whatever, they use this to play in different countries. So if I wanted to, I can take this, I could set it to Brazil, Make it about that big, and there we go. I'm playing on Brazil servers with Brazil people. Heck, if I wanted to, I could go play in freaking Italy. Mamma mia. Anyways, this is what we're going to be using for our testing, and hopefully you now have a better understanding of how a NetDuma router works. Okay, so now that explanation is out of the way, let's talk about this test and how we figured out whether or not we got into a bot lobby or not. For this testing, we ran three sets of eight solo games in Warzone. Before any testing began, I made sure to run five solo games just to make sure that the skill-based matchmaking is dialed in and is getting me into the lobbies that I would normally expect while playing the game. And so the first set of eight games was done with the filtering mode completely off. So I would go in here, I would turn this off as it is now, I would load up Warzone, and I'd play my eight solo games back to back. And in turn, this set acted as our control with no manipulation whatsoever, just eight straight games. Our second set of games was done in Brazil. So how I would accomplish this was I would put the geolocation right here, make it about this size, and I would find a match. Now on Brazil servers, the minimum ping is about 140, 150 for me. So I ran eight games straight. All of them were at at least 140 ping. And so for the last set of eight games, I played them in the Midwest region of the United States. Now, the reason why it was played in the Midwest is because the population is very, very low over there compared to other regions in the United States. So if you look at California, New York, Florida, it's very, very low. And one of the theories is that low population areas are going to lead to easier lobbies because they're harder to fill and harder to find better players to merge with. So because of that, the Midwest was one of our tests. Now after hearing all that, you probably have questions as to why I didn't test other locations like Hawaii or Australia. I didn't test Hawaii because there's no Warzone server here, so if I set the geo filter to Hawaii exclusively, I wouldn't be able to find a game. Um, I wanted to do South Africa. This server here has a 237 ping, and I also wanted to test Australia. Now, the problem with these that I ran into was that when I filtered to these locations, um, what happened was I either got an error in game that says can't connect to matchmaking servers, or I would either be sitting waiting for a game for over half an hour before I just gave up and left the queue. So I would love to test these areas, but I just wasn't able to find a game at all. So that's how the games were ran. In each game, I made sure to include the same loadout every time. 
not the DMR Mac 10, no. but instead the Kilo RPG just completely average. Oh. And I also make sure to land at this spot every time to ensure that I wasn't throwing games and putting myself in lower skill lobbies intentionally. And then after playing all 24 solo matches, my bud Russ and I, we went in into the stats of each game and we collected the stats of the top 100 players for every game. We collected their KD, their score per minute, and their total win count. An issue that we ran into while collecting results was that some players' profiles were either private or they had a duplicate name. So for example, we ran into a lot of players named Juice World, RIP. So for those people with duplicate names, we weren't able to find the exact account that was in that match. So what we would do is just go down to the next player, but at the end, we made sure to have at least 100 players per lobby, resulting in the stats of 2,400 different accounts. I want to take a quick moment to shout out Clutch Russ for helping me with this. Um, had he not helped put all these numbers into this Excel sheet, uh, this video would either take weeks to make or would not even be made at all. So shout out to Clutch Russ for putting in most of this information into the spreadsheet. Uh, he is a paid Warzone coach, so if you'd like to check out what he does, I will leave a link for you in the description. Now with that all being said, we can finally get to the results, so let me show you those and let's discuss. So as you can see here, here are the three sets. On the y-axis on the left are the games, so game one through eight. And at the end of eight games, we made sure to get the averages. I've also included my stats just to give you a representation of how we tested. On the left here, we have the games played, so game one through game eight. We have the kills that I got during the game, and then we included the KD median and the KD average. I included both because sometimes the stats are skewed for each game. So for example, there are some players that are at that three KD. Meanwhile, in the same lobby, there's some players who are at like a 0.3. So we made sure to include KD median to get somewhat of a more accurate result of the lobby. The color coding here is uh, whether it's above average or below average. Now I'm sure right now where your eyes are looking is probably at these Brazil games. <laughs> I don't know how to explain these. I'm going to be so honest with you, I just don't know. Our lowest game yet was a 0.7 lobby average. Uh, even the median was a 0.7. We had a 0.77, a 0.92. Even over in the Midwest, filtered, we had a 0.79 and a 0.91. So if this is not proof that the NetDuma can possibly give you bot lobbies without having to reverse boost, then uh, I don't know how people are getting into such easy lobbies. I literally cannot find any other way. Um, also, one thing that I need to point out when looking at these numbers, especially the KDs, is that the average KD of a lobby in Warzone is gonna range from a high 0.6 to a low 1.2. So most of these lobbies that you see here are gonna be in that range from that 0.6 to that 1.2 range. The thing is though, is that these are not consistent. It seems to be that your luck of getting into a bot lobby increases with Brazil and the Midwest because when I played unfiltered I got into mostly higher skilled lobbies as you could see here. I even had a lobby that was a 1.2. Meanwhile in Brazil first game that I play is under average. The next game was even worse and then my eighth game was just completely completely worse. For this 19 kill game, luckily, I have it recorded. I didn't talk much during it, but I'm still going to upload it and unlist it just so you could see what kind of players I ran into. And also, another link I'll be putting in the description is the one to the spreadsheet. So you could take a look at this as a whole and you could go into the stats of every single game and look at each and every player. Now, of course, in the comments, I would more than love to hear your guys' opinions on the stats here. My take on this is that if you play unfiltered or at least in high population areas, as an above average player, you're pretty much going to get above average lobbies most of the time. Meanwhile, with lower population like Brazil and the Midwest, where it's hard to find players, it's like a random chance. I would say skill based matchmaking is strict, but the numbers disprove it. So, for example, I had a 17 kill game here with a 1.09 lobby. And then the next game, I got into an easier lobby. So I wouldn't say that skill-based matchmaking affects this much. Rather, it's just the connection. 
Now, there's one thing that I have to mention because I feel like if I don't, I'm going to get that one person who comments and says this, but I am not paid by any company or sponsor other than YouTube to just make videos. So I'm not sponsored by NetDuma or any of its competitors. I'm not sponsored by Activision. Like I'm not paid to make these stats up or whatever. The only thing I'm paid by is YouTube and it's literally by the view, nothing else. So I thought I'd make that clear. However, with this information here that I'm showing, I feel like this could lead to cheating in tournaments. That has been a huge thing that's brought up lately. People are apparently geo-filtering to other locations to get easier lobbies and cheat in tournaments. One thing I want to shoot down is that if they are geo-filtering to Brazil, it's going to be very, very obvious for two different reasons. When they go to find the game in the box to the left, when it says finding a match, ping uh, more than blah, blah, blah milliseconds, when they find a Brazil game, it's going to be at least 100. For me, it was a minimum of 140. And while they're in the game, they're going to have this yellow indicator towards the left that shows that they have high ping throughout the entire game. So unless they're located completely far away from any server, if they're getting over 100 ping, then that means something is up. However, with the Midwest, I feel like streamers or YouTubers can get away with it because with the Midwest, for me, I was getting like 60, 70 ping. It wasn't enough to really set off any notifiers or any alerts. So I feel like the Midwest is, uh, is how streamers or YouTubers could be doing this kind of stuff if they are. And so these are the results here, hand counted. Luckily, if you want to do this test yourself, you very well can without having to put in all these numbers because as of a day ago, this website went public and it allows you to find the skill level of your lobbies. So if you want, you could plug in the numbers of the lobbies I tested and get these numbers for yourself. Or if you want to find like the world record lobbies, so this is like a solo duo one, you can see the median KD, average KD, and basically all the stats for the lobby. So if you want to, you could do this test for yourself and see what you get. So hopefully this can shine some light on uh, making tournaments more legit and uh, hopefully putting in some more viewer trust into these high kill games, especially with how low skilled or high skilled these lobbies can be. Again, hope you guys enjoyed the video. My name is Wetzel and until next time, peace.